जय हिंद एवरी वन वेलकम टू द क्लास ऑफ ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन अंडर यूनिट फोर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस सम इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स लाइक पावर लॉन्चिंग वर्सिज वेवलेंथ देन वी विल स्टडी द कंसेप्ट ऑफ इक्लेबर न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर एंड देन वी विल सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर ऑन द फोटो डायोड गेन दैट इज एपीडी गेन एंड फाइनली वी विल कंक्लूड द लेक्चर बाय कैलकुलेटिंग द सिग्नल टू नॉइस रेशियो फॉर द ऑप्टिकल रिसीवर और द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द मेन कंटेंट्स फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर एज डिस्कस्ड विल बी पावर लॉन्चिंग वर्सेस वेवलेंथ देन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ इक्लिब्रम न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर देन वी विल सी वट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर ऑन द अवेलांचे गेन और फोटोडायोड गेन देन वी विल सी the what are the sources of noise in the optical receiver or photo detector and then we will calculate the signal to noise ratio for the receiver so first of all power launching versus wavelength so basically in the case of optical communication light is coupled or launched into the optical fiber from the sources so in this topic we will study what is the impact of wavelength or what is the effect of change in the wavelength on the power launched or coupled into the optical fiber basically we have some optical source example of led may be led or laser then light emitted from the source is coupled or launched into the fiber okay so we will see what is the impact of change in wavelength lambda over the power launched or coupled into the fiber basically it is very simple power launched or coupled into the fiber okay the coupling efficiency or power coupled pc basically the power coupled or amount of power that will go into the optical fiber depends upon various things like uh, what is the radiation pattern of the source most importantly what is the brightness of the source brightness radiation pattern numerical aperture diameter and a number of points but there is when we if we calculate the power coupled or power launched it will be power coupled will be nearly equal to power emitted and numerical aperture square and we can also see the coupling efficiency if we see the derivation is nearly equal to or may be expressed in terms of b not and numerical aperture square so clearly we can see that the power launched or coupled into the optical fiber does not depend on the wavelength okay but we know that the number of modes in the optical fiber the number of modes for example in the case of multi mode fiber a number of modes propagate into the optical communication system so the number of modes existing in the fiber depends upon the wavelength and this power launched or coupled into the fiber will be divided among the modes so from these two formula we can see that that let's say multi mode graded index fiber is there so the number of modes existing in the fiber may be represented as alpha over alpha plus 2 2 pi a n1 over lambda square into delta so the number of modes we can see that the number of multiple modes propagated into the multi mode graded index fiber clearly depending upon the wavelength lambda or we can see in simple formula terms the v equal to 
टू पाई बाई लेमडा ए एन वन इन टू टू डेल्टा की पावर वन बाई टू वी कैन सी दैट द फ्रीक्वेंसी नॉर्मलाइज फ्रीक्वेंसी और वी नंबर इज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द वेव लेंथ एंड द नंबर ऑफ मोड्स प्रोपेगेटिंग इन टू द फाइबर लेट से एम इज गिवन बाय एल्फा ओवर एल्फा प्लस टू इंटू वी स्क्वेयर बाय टू सो क्लियरली वी कैन सी दैट द नंबर ऑफ मोड्स प्रोपेगेटिंग इन टू द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर इज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द वेव लेंथ एंड द पावर लॉन्च और कपल्ड इन टू द फाइबर और पावर इन टू द लॉन्च इन टू फाइबर दैट विल बी डिवाइडेड अमंग द मोड्स प्रेजेंट इन द फाइबर सो दैट ऑल्सो डिपेंड अपॉन द ब्राइटनेस ऑफ द सोर्स बी नोट एज वेल एज द ऑपरेटिंग वेव लेंथ सो वी कैन नाउ क्लियरली से दैट द पावर लॉन्च और कपल्ड इन टू द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द वेव लेंथ हाउ एवर the number of modes existing in a multimode fiber depend upon the wavelength and correspondingly the power distribution per mode inside the optical fiber power distribution per mode also depends upon the wavelength so next concept is equilibrium numerical aperture equilibrium numerical aperture basically what happens in the previous slide we have studied what is the impact of wavelength on the power launched or coupled so basically power launched or coupled into the fiber pc will be nearly equal to emitted power into numerical aperture square or we can say that the coupling efficiency is nearly equal to p not into numerical aperture square so we can see that the power launched or power coupled depends upon numerical aperture or is a function of numerical aperture so when the power is coupled or launched into the fiber when the power is coupled or launched into the fiber it gets distributed among the modes power is divided in modes okay in the previous slide we have seen that the power launched or coupled into the fiber gets divided among the multiple modes in the case of multi mode fiber but does all the mode propagate into the fiber no we know that we know that that we have studied some modes some modes may be leaky leaky or radiative mode which does not propagate and power corresponding to these mode is lost so basically what happens the power launched or power coupled into the fiber gets divided among modes and all modes does not propagate so the power corresponding to these modes which does not propagate gets decreases after some distance that is after traveling a certain distance in the fiber the power launched or power coupled seems to be decreasing and we know that the power coupled or power launched also a function of numerical aperture so in the optical fiber communication in the optical up to a certain distance the power coupled keep on decreasing until the leaky modes or radiative modes get away or are lost so it appears that when the power coupled get decreases numerical aperture also gets 
decreases and after some certain distance let's say practically it has been observed that the practical distance is 50 meter let's say after traveling a distance of 50 meter in the optical fiber this power coupled value gets stable or an equilibrium state is achieved so when this PC gets fixed, numerical aperture value also gets fixed. And this value of numerical aperture is known as the equilibrium numerical aperture. Let's see this with the help of diagram in the next slide. So this is the concept of equilibrium through the diagram. We can see that as a function of distance, the numerical value, numerical aperture value keep on decreasing up to a distance of 50 meter because in the starting 50 meter distance the PC gets keep on decreasing and if PC gets keep on decreasing then numerical aperture also appears to be get decreasing and after traveling this distance of approximately let's say 50 meter the PC gets fixed numerical aperture also achieves the state of equilibrium and a equilibrium state is achieved and this corresponding value of numerical aperture is known as the equilibrium numerical aperture. Next is what is the impact of change in temperature on the avalanche again? It has been studied that in the case of APD, that is avalanche photodiode, this avalanche photodiode is known as the photodiode with internal gain. With internal gain. This is denoted by capital M. Basically, in the case of APD, there is concept of impact ionization and due to repeated impact ionization under the influence of very high reverse bias voltage. Okay. Here the reverse bias is used and a high field is applied. So under the high bias of reverse bias, the carriers get enough energy and bonds are broken and more and more secondary carriers are generated that results into the additional photocurrent or photocarriers and that is known as the internal gain. So basically with the change in temperature the performance should remain constant. The performance of any system should not be impacted due to the change in the temperature. So ultimately we have to ensure that the performance or the gain of the photodiode should remain constant. So if due to change in temperature which can be very significant when it is operating near the high reverse bias voltage. Okay. So the change in temperature can be controlled by controlling the reverse bias voltage. Basically gain APT gain M. That may be treated as a function of temperature and that may be also depending on reverse bias voltage. So the gain is changed with the change in the reverse bias voltage. The gain is also impacted by the change in the temperature. So what we can do? We can apply a compensation circuit that will ensure whenever there is impact on the gain due to change in the temperature, the reverse bias voltage is adjusted accordingly so that the gain remains constant. So basically the avalanche gain will be impacted by temperature as well as reverse bias voltage. So to nullify the impact of change in temperature, we will use a compensation circuit that will ensure 
the change in the reverse bias voltage so that there is no change on the detector gain. This is the expression. These are the temperature characteristics. Here we have shown the gain versus voltage and as well as temperature. So, for controlling the effect of change in temperature, we will control the applied bias voltage so that the gain remain constant. Next is we will calculate the most important signal to noise ratio in photodiode or in the case of optical receiver. So before that we will study the photo detector receiver circuit or its equivalent circuit. In the photo, photo diode or in the optical receiver, the very first component is photo diode that may be APD or PIL. The main function of this photo diode is to convert the received optical signal into the corresponding electrical form that is photons are incidented and electron hole pair are generated under reverse bias when they move current is produced. So, that will generate the photo current IP. So, the useful signal in the case of photodiode is at the output we have photo current. When the optical power is incidented P in that is optical is incidented over the photodiode then the photo current is produced that is the electrical form. So, basically the main function of the photodiode will be O to E conversion. Then, then basically the signal may be very weak to amplify that we will use a amplifier just after the photodiode and this amplifier is known as the front end amplifier. Then basically this is the equivalent circuit of the optical receiver. In the equivalent circuit we can see this is the photodiode, this is the amplifier. Then we have a number of registers and capacitors are there. like junction capacitance, amplifier input capacitance, amplifier resistance, load resistance, series resistance. So, when we have to calculate or compute the signal to noise ratio, we have to calculate the power corresponding to the useful signal that is IP and then we have to calculate the power corresponding to the noises present in the photo detector as well as due to the amplifier. These are the various sources of noise or error present in the optical receiver system or the photodiode. The main noise that are present during the photo detection process are quantum noise due to the arrival rate of photons or collection of electron hole pair that follow a Poisson process or quantum process. Dark current, sometimes the photo current may be present even in the absence of light that is known as the dark current. Background noise may be also present. Thermal noise due to resistive components present in the amplifier also known as the Johnson noise. So, these are the various gain fluctuation can also be there. So, these are the various noises present in the optical receiver or the photodiode. Sometimes leakage current can also be there. There are a number of sources of noise or errors. However, 
mainly the dominating may be the quantum noise and thermal noise these two are the dominating other two like dark current that is negligible that can be negligible these are dominating in the similar way other like surface leakage that is also negligible so the main purpose of this is to calculate the noise power present because of presence of these noises or sources of errors so mainly the noise power will be computed because corresponding to the quantum noise and thermal noise so if we have computed the signal to noise ratio then signal noise signal power corresponding to the useful signal that useful signal is photo current ip then we have to compute the noise power and noise power is computed corresponding to the photo detector noise power and the noise power corresponding to the amplifier so the corresponding signal power is given by ip square and if we have to compute for the apd we know that all calculation remains same except that a parameter in terms of internal gain m is added so for the avalanche photo detectors it will be i square pt into m square then we have to compute the noise power the noise power will be added for the all the sources present in the amplifier as well as in the photo detector we have studied the mainly the noise is present because of quantum noise or short noise dark current surface leakage current these are the three sources for the noise in the photodiode or photo detector and in the case of amplifier we will have thermal noise so this is the noise corresponding to the amplifier and these are the noise is present in the photodiode or photo detector so the corresponding signal to noise ratio is power corresponding to the useful signal ip square into m square this is the case for apd and then these two are added to compute the total so this is the noise power as we have studied only two the quantum noise and thermal noise are the dominating one and leakage current and dark current these two are negligible so these can also be neglected during the computation of signal to noise ratio so in this way we can compute the signal to noise ratio for the optical receiver or in the photodiode we know that the signal to noise ratio should be very high basically signal to noise ratio tells us about the channel conditions whether the channel conditions are favorable for the communication or not when the snr is high that means channel conditions are suitable for communication and corresponding bit error rate will also be less or error performance will be good and if snr is low then bit error rate will be high and the overall performance of the communication system will be poor so that's all for this lecture thank you everyone okay.